right, guys. So we take a look at the uh, internet weather for this week. Have a little bit of a, a little data loss this week, so I don't have the last week and the change because uh, we're missing a little data this morning. But we do have the top ten for yesterday. I do have that, uh, so I'm going to give um, you know a readout on that. But that's why these uh, columns on the right here are empty as opposed to usual. Uh, so uh, I guess the I'm going to point out the notable things and skip over the things that are maybe not as notable. So 6379 TCP, these are, I guess I would consider this an oddball one that we probably I think we've been seeing it more so recently, but um, you know most people aren't familiar with it. So this is Redis, uh, which is kind of like a uh, caching database uh, type server. And we know that there's been a lot of scanning on this uh, particular port looking for open Redis servers that maybe they could, you know, collect data. Maybe somebody's left it insecure or whatever. So we know there's a lot of that activity going on. So if you do run Redis, um, you probably want to make sure that, uh, you know, that's secured. Um, and we, there's a lot of it running in the cloud, too. So there's some cloud instances of this where people forget to secure and lock it down. We kind of talked about that on an earlier segment uh, related to uh, cloud-based vulnerabilities. So uh, the next one, number four, is Protocol 47 GRE, uh, generic routing encapsulation. We're going to take a closer look at that because that's really odd. Uh, I haven't quite figured out what's going on there yet, uh, but we'll take a better look at that. Some of the other ones you know, like SSH and the web ports. Um, down towards the bottom here, number eight and nine are uh, 2375 and 2376 TCP, which are Docker uh, service ports. So that's probably somebody looking for open or exposed Docker containers uh, so that they can do, you know, see if they're um, exploitable or if they have some sort of default configuration that they can take advantage of there. In terms of the most sources probing, uh, a lot of the same cast of characters that we see all the time. Um, you know, I would point out number six here, 5555 five, five, TCP, which people might not be as familiar with. This is the Android debug bridge. And you have Microsoft SQL Server right below it, uh, SSH and another web service port. Number 10, though, again, is 6379 TCP, which is Redis. And we're going to take a look at that as well um, in a slide. And then we have a couple other slides that are not on the top 10, uh, but are also of interest uh, related to today's program. So uh, let's take a quick look here. So this is um, the Protocol 47 generic routing encapsulation. If you're not familiar with GRE, it's um, it's an IP protocol that's kind of used for VPN tunnels to establish like point-to-point -point tunnels between locations, and you can just tunnel any kind of traffic you want through it, really, as long as it's set up properly. Um, the thing that we're seeing here, and this is a one-year view, right? It's a one-year view. You can see I, I, I brought out a one-year view because I wanted to kind of see um, you know, historically what this has looked like. And we really do not normally see uh, scanning activity on this particular protocol. Um, and I'm not really sure why somebody is looking for this or who they are, but we can see that there um, are these very sharp spikes with these decay patterns here. And I think I mentioned this on previous uh, shows that this is very indicative of some sort of botnet because uh, typically you'll see this decay pattern uh, with a sharp rise and a kind of sawtooth waveform here. Uh, because what happens is, is let's say I have 3,000 bots or 4,000, it looks like is this first spike at the top here. I have 4,000 bots and I tell them all, I want you to scan uh, 50,000 IP addresses. So the ones that have really good network bandwidth, um, you know, maybe they have really good high speed network bandwidth, they finish really quick. And the ones that have slower bandwidth finish more slowly. So that's why you get this decay pattern of, of ones that are, these ones over here have really bad network bandwidth. Uh, they just have really bad network internet connectivity. So they take longer to finish their job that they were instructed by the botnet. Uh, and then once he gets kind of like, you know, a quorum of however much he really wanted, the botnet operator might issue another command here. And a whole bunch more bots will start doing it. And he'll keep doing that. Um, and so that's why you see these quick sharp rises as they all start simultaneously. But then the faster ones finish early and the slower ones finish more you know, slowly in time across the span of a day or so, it looks like here. Um, so something's going on here. And we have, you know, it looks like a lot of these are in, this, in the U.S. Um, the most recent spike that we saw, I guess, a couple of days ago, uh, looks like maybe the 24th through 25th of, uh, I don't know, maybe it's even further back. Sorry, I might be reading this wrong. Uh, sometime last month, maybe towards the beginning of September here. 
Um, it looks like uh, it was up around the 7,000 scan sources per hour, uh, which is pretty significant. That's why, you know, it's up in that, you know, number three spot, um, uh, you know, uh, on the chart there. So um, when I took a quick spot check, obviously I didn't look at all 7,000 of them because that kind of takes a while. Um, but I just did a handful check of about 20 of them. And I would say probably 15 of the 20, looking them up in Shodan, uh, the, the scan sources involved here, they appear to be various uh, forms of uh, network DVRs, uh, which is not atypical. We see that a lot, right? We see that with Mirai was kind of infamous for recruiting those into their botnet. Um, uh, you know, the Maris botnet as well as kind of a, a Mirai variant as well. Um, there's a bunch of these other ones out there that, uh, you know, target uh, IoT type based devices like this and, and scoop them up into the botnet, either usually due to weak passwords or maybe some vulnerabilities. Uh, MicroTick is another real popular one. I guess that's the Maris botnet that we've seen. Uh, so uh, that's a, 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 you know, kind of a Soho router uh, that has some vulnerabilities in it. And um, they've been uh, scooped up into some large botnets as well. So I'm not really sure. Uh, overall, what the intent is here, because I'm not sure even if you found a uh, GRE tunnel or something that was listing, what you would use that for, um, or if there's any kind of, like, I'm not quite sure why they're looking for it yet, um, but it is relatively new activity. So we should probably, you know, try to take a little time and look more closely at what this is, because there's some definite coordinated activity going on here. Um, by a, go ahead, John, I'm sorry. Hey, it's interesting, a year ago, it's almost like in miniature, there was another similar pattern, right? Way down there at the lower left-hand corner, there's a burst of, of, you know, that almost is a miniature of what you have on the right, uh, you know. Right. But, but I guess, scale. you know, when you look at that, it's like maybe 150 to 200, <laughs> maybe at the peak there, scan sources per hour. So not a lot, right? Um, <laughs> and not as necessarily sawtooth waveforming, although maybe it's so small, I can't really see it very well. Um, but you know, this presents very well now. So, yeah, I yes. wonder, I wonder if they're trying to find these endpoints and maybe launch a, a DDoS attack to shut down GRE tunnels to disconnect. Mm. Yeah. I mean, that's I mean, possible. They, they, yeah. They, they haven't done it yet, obviously, but I mean, cause why else would you look for GRE endpoints? Uh, just trying to think it's just, not a protocol that I really yeah. would have expected to see scanning on. So, yeah, it is puzzling. And the only other thing I was thinking is like maybe, you know, normally with like reflection type activities, we think of UDP, right? Um, but this is its own, uh, it's its own IP protocol. And I don't really, I'm not really up on GRE and the statefulness of how it makes its sessions, but maybe there's some sort of reflection amplification uh, possibility that I'm not aware of here. And that's why they're searching to, I'm just guessing. I have no yeah. knowledge that this, that, you know, I'm putting out theories. So, um, yeah, it's, it's been too there's something long clearly I, here. It's been too long since I paid any attention to GRE. Yeah. I just it's same thing. I'm thinking, yeah, 20 years ago, you know, I probably would have, you asked me this question then, I might have known, but I don't remember. Yeah. So, I'm, you know, if I get some time here, I'll, I'll try to dig in a little more closely, uh, especially these scan sources and see if there's, because uh, clearly they're re receiving instructions from something, um, mm -hmm. you know, in a, you know, a fixed period of time here. So, you know, maybe we can figure out if there's one central communication point that's responsible for telling them uh, to start doing something. You know, maybe there's some botnet command and control that they're talking to and we can get a little bit more insight into what's going on here. But uh, uh, if we do, we'll let people know. And the next one that we had is the Redis port. Uh, not really much to say about this. As I mentioned, it is a, you know, um, a caching database. It's like an in-memory database, uh, very fast. Um, so a lot of people use it, uh, you know, as part of their, uh, you know, architecture for whatever their application might be. Uh, this is a two-year view, and I showed a two-year view so you can kind of see the overall trend. There's some weird kind of uh, spike that occurred here back around uh, the late part uh, of 2019 or maybe January 2020 where it got really kind of choppy here. 
Um, but in general, it was, you know, pretty much down in like the 200 to 400 scan tips per hour. We do have a little data anomaly here. I think this is we just missing data from our database. There might have been something I'm forgetting that where we had a, an issue. Um, uh, but you can see that in the past, like since probably about March of this year, it's really kind of gone up to a new level and stayed at that level, uh, which is, you know, maybe 1,400 to 1,600 scan sources per hour on average. So it's about eight times as large or roughly, let's say, you know, five to eight times as large as it used to be. Uh, so it's probably, you know, something to keep an eye on in terms of, uh, um, you know, what's going on there. Again, this is probably one that the, the scanning is very regular and consistent here, which is, you know, different than that sawtooth. Uh, so it's kind of like they're always scanning all the time, which we see with some things. So it'd be kind of interesting to see who these scan sources are, uh, which I didn't get a chance to do. Uh, I think on a previous program, I showed an example of some of that uh, scan probe traffic and the Redis instruction that they send uh, to try to, it's a kind of interesting protocol too. It's a very tight, small protocol. Um, so that's in one of the previous shows. I think back in July uh, when we did a show, uh, I talked about that and showed one of the honeypot captions we had from that. So uh, people can go look at that if they're interested because it's probably the same stuff. And then this is Jim's port. It's called Jim's chart because uh, this is related to the oh my God vulnerability. I don't really know uh, how much is exactly related. The one thing I would say about this, so these are the three ports that uh, you had identified were involved in the um, that OMI vulnerability. And, um, you know, so we got port 1270 is in blue, uh, 5985 in red, and 5986 in green. So the 5986 has a very kind of regular diurnal pattern going on here. Uh, you know, what I would say, like a daily pattern, a spike usage. Uh, which I don't really know how to ascribe to that. But what I would say is that certainly something about 1270 became very interesting uh, to scan sources around this 9.15, 9.16, September 16th timeframe, because um, we start to see an uptick where we didn't really see much of that at all uh, prior, and it, it kind of very regularly started to happen in concert with the other activity as well. Um, so I don't really necessarily have any really good insights there, but, um, you know, that's this is what the activity looks like. And this is a 60 day chart. I looked back further, uh, but it pretty much all looked like uh, that I saw, you know, the, the, the left hand of the chart here where it's kind of, you know, regular kind of noise floor of traffic. Um, and then things got a little bit more choppy here. Uh, I'm guessing this is in relation to that, that recent vulnerability that was announced. I don't know if you have any other insights, Jim. But... Yeah, no. I, a friend of mine that he does honeypots saw some particular uh, exploit attempts against against this uh, right around the fifteenth, which is right after the vulnerability was disclosed. Um, so, yeah, it's interesting to see. Uh, I hadn't had a chance to look at our data to see, but he had definitely seen a, a significant increase at that time, and he attributed it to Mirai, uh, you know, a Mirai botnet, one of the those looking for these. So, and I, in the Internet Storm Center traffic, I had actually seen a very small spike about a year ago but not to the levels that we saw on on these three ports in the last two weeks. So, okay. interesting. And that, your time frame aligns really good with, uh -huh. with the blue uptick here, too. Yeah, so. Yep. Um, interesting. Okay. And I didn't get a chance to look in our, um, you know, our passive honeypot collection to see if I saw any kind of probing against these ports, but I suspect we probably, if we we got a chance to look, we would find something similar to what, um, your uh, your counterpart had found over there at the Internet, Internet Storm Center. So, yep. um, uh, and then lastly, uh, one other interesting thing that I thought I'd point out um, was this is again related to I think I mentioned this the Maris botnet, which is a collection of bots 
um, that are related to the microtech routers. And um, there is a component in there called Glibteba. I don't know how you pronounce that properly. Um, that does the actual scanning part, and that's the malware component that does that scanning. And what it does is it scans for ports uh, 8728 and 82, 8291, which are related to the Microtech. Those are Microtech service ports. Um, and uh, we've talked about that on the show before. Um, and Maris is kind of a uh, – it's kind of a variant of Mirai, I guess. They say it's, got, it's close family member to Mirai. Um, but it's, um, yeah, I guess it's more focused on the Microtech family. And, you know, we had mentioned, or uh, I think it was mentioned on the show, maybe not, uh, Yandex um, is a uh, very large provider in uh, Russia. They're basically the Google of Russia, you know, so they're a similar kind of counterpart to what we would think of as Google. They offer similar services uh, in the, uh, in the Russia, um, you know, uh, ecosystem. And so they've got mail and web and uh, search and all that kind of stuff. And uh, they uh, had a DDoS attack leverage against them over a period of time here. And I kind of highlighted them in yellow. I don't have the exact times of the Yandex uh, DDoSs. I just had rough days. So they were targeted on five days uh, with increasingly larger DDoS attacks uh, until on the 5th here. September 5th was like the largest. And I think there's a lot of reports out there saying it was uh, extremely large, one of the largest DDoS attacks they've seen, uh, and they're attributing it to this um, Maris spotnet, you know, composed of these microtech routers. The thing I thought was interesting, I don't really have an explanation for why this is, but this scanning activity that we see related to microtech routers on these ports, you can see it, you know, had a pretty regular pattern. This is a 60-day chart. It's been kind of at this level. Even if you go back into previous shows, you'll see us talking about it. Um, in more detail, the, the scanning that's occurred here. Um, but right around the 15th, 14th, 15th, they basically went like dark and they stopped scanning in large part, um, you know, for the service ports for microchip routers. So why that is, I'm not quite sure. Um, there's probably a lot of theories out there. I think some theories are that, well, maybe, you know, the heat was so hot and the media press coverage over the Yandex DDoS that they were like, well, let's just lay low for a while and not scan too much. I don't know. I'm just theorizing. <laughs> um, but for whatever reason, they decided to, you know, um, you know, suspend their scanning operations for a period of time. And I think we've seen that in the past as well, but maybe not as closely, you know, tied in time to a very large DDoS attack that was kind of a big media news item. So, an interesting thing, probably something to continue to watch to see if it kind of resumes that pattern that it has, you know, on the left-hand side of the screen here um, to see if it comes back to where it used to be. Uh, I don't think these bots went away. I think they were just told, stop scanning and spreading um, for whatever reason. So I guess we'll see, uh, we'll see if that changes, uh, you know, in the weeks ahead. But I thought that was an interesting thing. Yeah, I Seeing that without having heard about, you know, a big takedown of a, you know, command and control infrastructure or anything is kind of strange. So, right. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I think you're right. The, they're probably just laying low for a while, but I wouldn't, I would expect them to come back at some point. I was just, I was, I was just looked, they just looked it up and just see if they had like a patch or something too that maybe that they're trying to defeat some new, but they, they didn't patch in that time frame. So it's, you know, at least not availability of it. So it was before then was their last update. Right. Yes. Yeah, no, I'm not aware of any kind of countermeasures that were put in place, um, either by Microtech or any other types of security um, people trying to, you know, take down the command and controls or anything like that. But, um, you know, I guess we'll, we'll keep an eye. I also don't really have a good explanation for, you know, these really sharp spikes that we have um, periodically here. Uh, I'm not quite sure why that is, but that's, you know, oh, actually, these are scan flows, but not scan sources. Uh, so, you know, it might, it might uh, settle down a little bit better if you go by scan flows or scan sources as opposed to scan flows. Uh, but in any event, um, definitely something, uh, something interesting and yeah, something to keep an eye on in the future because these two ports have been scanned quite a bit over the past, I would say it's like two, three years. There's been a lot of, um, 
activity and churn around these micro tick routers and these ports um, for various reasons. I know there's another port open on it that I think can be used for like some amplification and like bandwidth testing. So you can do like a bandwidth test to it and it sends like a ton of data back to you. So um, there's a lot of interesting, uh, you know, uses that bad actors have found uh, to use with these routers. So um, something to keep an eye on.